This is Malcolm341. In today's video, we're going to look at some Maya tricks and secrets. So today we're going to look at perfect 45 degree angle cuts with the wedge tool, export smooth mesh preview as an FBX file, and how to use math in the channel box to make relative transform edits. So let's get into it. Okay, so first up, we have the perfect 45 degree angle cuts. And why this is important is because you will want to often like, I don't know, make a planter box or a curb or something or just a piece of geometry where you need to basically have an extrusion from here from this face go straight out. So you want to make that basically. This should be flat on the other end, let's say. So you want to do that. And I've just eyeballed it, but you can already see what happened here. It's not the same relative scale on either of these faces. Like this one is skinny this way, and this one is like too fat this way. And that's because that isn't a 45 degree angle. I just kind of arbitrarily dragged it out and then extruded off of that. And what I want is a perfectly exactly 45 degree cut, which will allow me to have something that looks more like this. So the width of this and this are the same width. And there's a trick you can do in the top down view. You can switch over to the top view here and you could enter the multi cut tool here and you can hold shift. And if you hold shift and then you do the cut, you can drag and you can set it to 45 degrees. Go to the options box here for multi cut. And instead of 10, we'll set it to 45. Hit enter. And now when I hold shift and drag, see it snaps to 45 degrees. So we could do a cut like that and then delete the face there and then you know extrude the edges or whatever from here so extrude like that and that would give you the perfect 45 degree where the width of this and this are the same the limitation with this tool though is that it won't work if your geometry is arbitrarily rotated so for example if i've got my model and let's say it's like here i don't know at nine degrees or whatever and we've gone modify freeze transforms as will often happen as you're modeling when we go into the top down view and we enter the multi-cut tool, we hold shift. Now 45 isn't 45. See, it's like less than 45. And so when we go to delete these faces and grab these edges here, get that guy and just assign the pivot to be along there. When we go to drag those out and extrude them, you can already see the problem. Sure, they came out at the right angle, but again, this has got this width and then this is skinnier. So the solution to the problem is actually using the wedge tool instead of doing a cut. And the cool thing about the wedge tool is it can be really off angle access. So like I'm going to put this into a really tricky position here where we've got a bunch of like random rotations. It's kind of slightly off in all axes at the same time. And then I'm going to go modify freeze transforms. And so now it's going to be really tricky to actually get that 45 degree. So the wedge tool can be found under edit mesh and then way down here in wedge, or you can select the face first and then hold shift and right click and then go into wedge faces right here. So what wedge faces does is it will take a face and an edge as an input and it will create a wedge along those faces, which is super handy because we've got the angle from the edge here. And we've got the face that we want to do the 45 on. So what you do is you right click and you want to go into multi mode. And then another thing that you want to do is you want to go into display, heads up display, and then you want to come down here into poly count and turn that on. And by turning that on, what you're going to see is it shows you how many edges you currently have selected and how many faces. So on the far right here is how much we currently have selected. So you can see I've got one face selected. So if I click that, I've got one edge selected, and then I hold shift to add to my selection the one face. You can see I've got one and one. And now I'm just going to hold shift and right click, and I'm going to go to the wedge faces options box just so we can see how the tool works. It looks like the arc angle is set to 90, and we've got divisions of 10. So I'm just going to click apply so we can see what it does. And you can see it creates a wedge between that face and that edge that I selected. And you can tweak the divisions here later on if you want to. And you can change the angle and do a bunch of stuff here. Just going to undo that. So what we care about is that we actually want to do a wedge angle of 90 and a divisions of 1. And we want to select, I believe it's this back edge plus this face because we want the wedge to kind of cut there. And so let's hit apply and boom you get a perfect 45 degree angle, even though this object is like on such a weird plane and it's already had its transform frozen and it's all messed up. So I'm just gonna accept that. And then we can select the face here now that we've got our perfect angle. And then we can press D to align the face to this flat face, align the pivot. 
and then press D again to exit the tool, and then just hold Shift and extrude the face out. And so now when we've done the extrusion, you can see the width of this and this are perfect. They're exactly the same width. The angle's all perfect. It's fully extruded out. And then I'll just kind of clean up some of the excess junk. Just get the faces. And we don't need this edge, so I'm just going to delete that as well. So there you go. Pretty cool. Perfect wedges, no matter what the weird angle is. Okay, let's do a couple more just for fun, just so we can kind of get used to the tool here. So right-click, go to Multi, select an edge, select the face you want. Shift right click or go to the edit menu and we want to do a wedge and boom, there we go. I'm going to switch to the move tool, select this face, press D, align the pivot to that face, press D again to exit, hold shift and drag out. And then we've got another wedge. The wedge tool will also work on more complex geometry. It doesn't have to just be one face. So if we wedge this guy and get a nice 45, even though that was kind of a 3D shape to start out with. Okay, so up next we have the secret setting for exporting your uh, smooth mesh preview or sub D model into FBX and keeping the subdivision level that you set. So basically what the problem is, is if you've got your model here, it's like a whatever regular polygon model and you press two on the keyboard to switch to smooth mesh preview mode or sub D mode, or you press three to stay in sub D mode, but just not show the edges or whatever. When you go file, export selection, choose FBX and you say, okay, sure, whatever, export that stuff. Okay, cool. It's exported. Now, if you go into something like Marmoset Toolbag or Unreal or Substance Painter or whatever your next app is, and you go File, Import Model, and we choose our FBX file, we import it, and it comes in as a cube. And you're like, what the heck is going on? Doesn't make any sense. Like, it was smooth when I sent it out of Maya. Why is it not smooth now? And the reason for that is there is a weird little secret setting in Maya that you need to turn on. It's going to delete this from the scene here. Go back over to Maya. So first, you need to be in one of the sub-D modes, so two or three, whichever one you prefer. I'll just go to three so we can see it working. So go to the file menu, go to export selection, and then under the preset stuff here on the side, go into geometry. And what you want to do is you want to turn off smooth mesh, which seems counterintuitive. And it took me a little while to figure this out as well, because it's like, oh, I want the smooth mesh. And this actually means you don't want the smooth mesh. So when you turn this guy off, what it does is when it exports the FBX file, it collapses the sub D into polygons and then exports the FBX. When this is on, it looks at whatever mode you have here and ignores it and just exports the low poly model. So turn that guy off and do the export selection. We'll just overwrite the file. Sure, whatever. It's also super annoying. When you turn that off, it always gives you this annoying warning telling you that it did what you wanted it to do. So that is super annoying. So back into Marmoset and we'll go to file import model and we'll choose this again. And boom, there you go. You can see now we got what we actually wanted and what we expected to get on the first try. So just another little weird secret trick. Okay, and finally, we've got the how to do math in the channel box. So I've got a couple objects here, and they are correctly transformed away from zero in the world. So basically, got some Y translate here for this guy, and this guy, and this guy, and they're all different. And so if I wanted these guys to go up by, let's say, like, plus 25 in the channel box, if I were to say, like, oh, let's go 25 and hit enter. See, they all go to the same place. And that's because I'm setting translate Y to 25, but all of their translate Y's were different to start out with. So what's cool about the math equations trick is that you can say, I would like to plus 25 to all the values that are currently there. So I'm going to select all of these guys. So I want to say plus 25 to whatever the current value is. So you select it and you say plus equals 25 and you hit enter and boom it moves plus 25 to what his value was plus 25 to him plus 25 to him so you can see they get moved relatively this can be super handy if you've got a bunch of assets and you need to just like do one little edit to them but it's like oh could you scale me all by two but you can't because if you type two into the scale it'll set them all to that whatever that value is so what you can actually do is you can actually select all of them and then you can hold left click and drag down to select all three scales. And then you could type times equals two. So times the scale by two, boom, everything scaled up by two, but relative to what their scale currently was, because if you just went in there and you just selected all this and typed two, they would do that. So pretty cool trick. 
this can be super helpful for things like lights because you might have a bunch of lights in your scene and the intensity of red might be three and this is one and this is 2.5 and this is whatever it's two again and you might just want to take everything in your scene and like up it but relative to its current value like let's say i just want to make all the lighting in the scene brighter by two same thing you can go to intensity you can type times equals two and it'll get brighter relative to two or you can come in and you can divide everything by two so again divided by equals two half everything boom there you go and everything's half and then you can just do it again divided by equals two and boom and you can continue to do that and you can do it with any value that you can see in the channel box you can do this math stuff on so here we've got the green light and its intensity is two and the blue light's intensity is three. And if we wanted to add one to both of those numbers, this be three, that be four, select them both, go over to intensity and we can say plus equals one, hit enter, boom, check it out. Blue is now four and green is now three. So super cool, super handy trick in some very specific situations, but it will save your life in those situations. Thank you very much for watching this video. Without viewers like you, this channel would not exist. If you like this video and enjoy the channel, please support me by purchasing something from the online store. Each purchase goes towards creating more video content and keeps the channel ad free. See you next time. Have an amazing day.